and recording has started. So, hello everyone. It is currently uh, July 2nd. It is 11.21 Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, and it has been, to this point, 66 days since the release of, since the official release of Blood Hunt, of Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt. So that's about two months and seven days. Uh, we are currently 11 days, 16 hours that we have left until the end of Season 1 right now. And things are coming. Action is coming. Um, we have a bit of news to cover. We're going to talk about uh, mostly, um, mostly about... Uh, the weekend, the week rotations, the weekend rotations. We're going to be talking about stuff that we know that's coming in about season two. Uh, more info about this. Uh, uh, we've got a special kind of um, little tidbit of information that got inside the game. Uh, we are. We also have news about. Uh, things that are coming in the future that have not been forgotten but have not also been talked about for quite a long time or acknowledged by developers. And uh, we are going to finish by talking about um, expectations for the game, expectations for the patch of what's coming next. So, uh, as usual... Uh, we are going to, well, first, we're going to start by, let me go, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, let me switch this, let me switch this, we are in game right now, um, yes, so as we said, 11 days, 16 hours, uh, one thing that was not necessarily advertised, but something that a lot of people seem to have missed out on in terms of news, is that... Currently, in the Blood Hunt store, in the seasonal section of the store, if you scroll completely at the end, uh, remember, we've talked about this last week, following the survey, we got the flamingo hair that got added, the dreadhawk hair, uh, hairstyle, I should say, the toxic hair color, the undead, uh, undead scene hair, but now this week, we got the asymmetric bob, and the combat champion uh, sunglasses uh, that were added. Apparently, why they're called combat champion is because of combat glue, uh, Samir, uh, that has these exact pairs of glasses. I guess it's an in, in um, an in office joke that they decided to make it official because you gotta name these, you know. So yeah, these were added to the store. So grab them before the season ends. We've got 11 days uh, to go. Now, in terms of actual news, there we go. Want to remind everyone that uh, also today, uh, later in this afternoon, we still have the esports gaming leagues, league uh, blood hunt tournaments, the uh, kindred's trials that are happening with a small uh, prize pool uh, at the end uh they were supposed to go with they were supposed to continue this weekend actually today but uh, we've discovered that now they've been planning to continue all month long which is which is a great uh, a great idea uh i'm glad to see this continue I'm glad that there's still a, a, a cash prize pool at the end. I've watched um, I've watched North America, uh, the competition for North America last weekend, and it was very interesting. It was very intense. You can see a lot of people go super ham, uh, unleashing everything they got. People go. I was watching at some point. I was watching six streams at the same time on my screen, uh, watching people compete, and it was absolutely like you know people were people were hungry. People were trying to get at each other. Uh, the competition is always to. I think the competition, if I understood correctly, is you have to post. Um, 
on the eternal leaderboard or something like this you have to post the stats of your best match that you're getting in the allotted uh time i believe it's two hours that you that you can play i'm not exactly sure about the rules but um i encourage people to go like follow their favorite streamer if you're a streamer put it in the title that you're doing this uh that you're doing this title this this trial this was at least i thought i thought that that was very very interesting i stopped watching overwatch league and was watching that only not just because it's my it's the game that i'm preferring but also because it was just genuinely very interesting to see all uh, these people go in uh just a brutal kill race um so yeah that's that was the thing uh it's continuing today you're seeing the hours right now it's in edt so this one is in an hour and a half um to be noted because this was something that i thought was weird uh the esports gaming league does have a twitch channel but for this event specifically uh they are not streaming it you have to find your favorite streamers you have to go in in the uh on twitch you have to go in vampire the masquerade blood Hines, a game uh repertoire i guess of online streams and you have to go in there and find the people that are participating in the tournament that's why you know putting a good title uh you know will get people to to just pay attention um so yeah if you're getting killed a lot in uh blood hunt solo uh today that is why that's happening uh, why you're suddenly having really stacked lobbies full of you know uh, twitch uh twitch streamers or why you've got like obsidian players suddenly playing solo blood hunt instead of ranked today this might be because of that uh okay so talking about specifically news uh you remember that last week we had a um uh last week we had a blog post by blood hunt talking about what's the state of blood hunt part one and it said we've got many posts to follow and we're about to get at least post two this week but it's gonna be next week uh wanted to let you know that we are hard at work on the next update and next week we will be sharing some exciting info about blood hunt a big thank you to our core community for being so patient with us and have a great weekend that was posted yesterday um yeah, seem to be saying that there's a lot of info, but there's still an approval process of what they're posting that still needs to be done. And the approval is taking a little bit longer than what they would have preferred. So that's why we're not, we're, we didn't get anything this week, but apparently, and I'll talk about this, there's going to be a hint of that later. There's going to be uh, more than just one post next week about uh, Blood Hunt News. So that's, it's good. It's like, this was a fluke this week. <laughs> um, oh, I forgot to post that in Twitch chat. Hold on. There we go. It's just to make sure that I'm not pulling any of this out of my uh, bottom. Okay. Um, so the post from last weekend was about the rotations that we had. So we had... Uh, Sorry, Duo Battle Royale Weekend event was concluded, and then the next event will be solo with rank cross with, with uh, solo ranked with crossplay off. For the uh, the week, solo blood hunt and trio uh, battle royale are enabled. So currently, uh, if you are live at this recording or listening to the, this uh, weekend, this weekend you have solo blood hunt. You've got Solo Ranked, and you've got Trio Blood Hunt. Uh, trio, well, I mean, Trio, regular trios. Um, these are the modes that are enabled this weekend. Um, and not just that. Hold on, again, I forgot the post. There we go. Here. And not just that, but this weekend has been extended 
Um, this weekend, ranked solo without crossplay. We'll be back alongside solo Bloodhound and Trios Battle Royale, as we just said. Furthermore, since our friends across the sea are celebrating on 4th, uh, 4th of July, this will be extended until Tuesday, 10 a.m. CEST. So, yeah, some, someone nudged someone at, at Shark Mob and said, like, hey, we've got a long weekend. NA is one of your, like, some of your top server uh, regions that are playing the game. Might as well just extend it. And that happened. Now, there's been some... Uh, there's been some questions. There's been some complaints uh, yesterday as the event, uh, the, the weekend event was starting. And we had, at the same time, we had solo blood hunt and we had solo ranked. And the queues didn't start immediately the moment that they, uh, the moment that they said, hey, the mode's been activated. So a bunch of people came to Twitter and immediately asked, what's up with this? Is there anything that you can do? Tell us something. And a bunch of people said, basically, just disable Solo Blood Hunt. And you're going to see we've got a few different responses. Uh, hold on, give me a sec. We're going to go with the first one. Uh, from PS5 Blood Hunt fanbase, it's not about ranked for us PlayStation players, it's about games with crossplay off, which you can't get on normal mode. If you care about the PS5 community, then really normal solo should be taken out and replaced with duos like last time. PS5 has had two weeks of PC players. David responds. Again, David is the live product director for Blood Hunt at Shark Mob. It's not a mode thing, it's a numbers thing. Since we have to choose between two pretty shitty alternatives, sadly. Oh no. That is no. You don't you don't do that. Um I will have I will have full confidence that we'll kick off. Organize it. You just need 42 souls at to match make at the same time in the same region, which is very interesting. I mean, I know that it's it's kind of expected. You need a certain amount of people to start a lobby. Um, what's up, Flesh Toast? Thank you for the follow, by the way. Um, yeah, so basically when people are saying like, okay, so the blood, it's activated, but nothing's happening. Of course, you need people to start flocking into the servers um, in order to like get an actual game started. That's, that's okay. But... Now, I what I find very interesting for me, like in a in a way that it's um, uh, like in a way that's maybe a little bit technical because you never know exactly the right amount of people that are going to be in your lobby because of several like uh, several issues where someone can find themselves disconnecting from the server. Uh, at start or you know usually when you have the loading screen and you're kind of waiting and waiting and waiting for the game to start when you've already selected your character and location uh it's usually you know the usual stuff that you get in kind of like league of legends uh heroes of the storm kind of you know game where everyone's trying to get their connection and sometimes some people like drop their connection have their game closed for some reason like they're toddler or their cat managed to find where the power button on the PC is and suddenly they're disconnecting and the game is trying to like compensate for this so much, there might be some games where you're starting with you know even though it's meant to be like for 42 players uh, you might start a game with like 36 or 38 or something like that um, but now we know that it needs 42 souls 42 people matchmaking at the same time in the same region that will trigger a game. I thought that was just interesting that way. Um, now we've got uh, here, God Kname Madker. I don't know how to say this. Um, they're saying it's been almost a day since uh, Ranked Solo came back, but there's only one match in the world. Is the queue bug or not enough people? If it doesn't have enough people, I think that you may need to disable Solo Blood Hunt, turn on crossplay or both. 
David replies, we are not disabling solos. People in solos don't want to play ranked in any large percentage. We know this from last time. Remember, remember last time that we did this? Remember that was there was the ranked weekend. The like the big response was solo blood hunt people were very not happy about that. Uh, because not everyone wants to, not everyone wants to play competitive. Uh, there's, and that's something that usually the competitive scene or people that play competitive games don't necessarily like clearly acknowledge because they want to play competitive. That's the only thing that they, that they think about in any kind of game that has a PVP element or PVP mode. They don't really care about people that want to do something else in the game other than PvP or play competitive. Like, they don't even acknowledge it. And that was the response that they got from solo Blood Hunt players because if, we, if, if we're being honest with ourselves, if you don't have friends, or if you don't want to, you're not good at playing with teams, uh, or you don't have, you don't want the stress of queuing solo into a trio. Uh, and then just kind of, yeah, you know, bad comms, not being able to follow the other people or not being at the same type of game level or game sense. And that's frustrating and all that. That's, that's one thing. And there's people that want a more casual experience of the game. Something that, you know, is fun, doesn't feel too punishing for dying on for, of an unfortunate matter um and that's what solo blood hunt is as a mode it's the casual mode of just regular players and uh and that's why david and the guys at shark mob looking at the numbers saw that solo blood hunt last time last time there was ranked a ranked weekend so disabling solo blood hunt was not a good idea um like that doesn't necessarily say exactly why or quantify it but david said last time this was a bad this was a bad idea we're never disabling solo blood hunt mode ever again is what he said so this is him reiterating the same thing um so we're not disabling solos people in solos don't want to play ranked in any large percentage we know this from last time so either it kicks off with crossplay off to allow separation there or we play uh with crossplay enabled modes for the weekends solos and trios so he's basically saying like either we leave it like this or uh, or we just remove ranked for the weekend and removing rank right now it's a no-no because now people are aware by the way I don't know if you're aware but this is the last weekend of this season to grind ranked points so if you want to like I've like I've said this last weekend I'm gonna say it again um, this is the last time if you want any of the rewards uh, that you can you can find the rewards in game they're they're all uh, listed there um, hold on let me let me show it again uh, alt game mode solo ranked F more info rewards the rewards are here uh, if you want to see them in a better resolution look at last week's uh, video that I've made uh, there's bigger like high-res pictures that I've posted on this screen um so yeah currently i am less than <laughs> less than a thousand r i've got this is what's about 600 610 rp to grind to reach silver which i absolutely want to do this is the game dying this game is getting worse okay yeah good good thing guys okay so supporter of hell hey we've got naysayer naysayer in the chat <laughs> naysayer in the screen right now Woo -hoo! sup naysayer just gonna do, just gonna do, just gonna do a little. Oh, okay, he's gone away. Okay. Not feeling rejected. Okay. Um, getting back to the news. 
Okay, so that's that. Uh, next up, again, talking about disabling. Uh, here, Kurt Ry Reyes, I don't know how to say the name. You guys screwed up by uh, so huge by putting ranked and blood hunt at the same time. David responded, solos and trios are fully playable. I'm sorry, but removing it wouldn't have made a difference looking at the numbers of players queuing for ranked. Numbers. The, the numbers don't lie. The truth is in the numbers. There you go. I still hope it can kick off in some region during the weekend, but we're not turning off solos again. That was worse by far. Okay. I've, sh I've shown you three posts. All of them revealing a little bit more of information, like, you know, to flesh out the situation of of solo blood hunt, the status of solo blood hunt, what it does, uh, and what it's for. I think we've all got the picture right now, right? Okay, good. Moving on. <laughs> uh, oh wait, another one. I'm sorry. There's another one. Here we go. I'm just gonna post this. Here we go. Uh, Austin 999, there's a long, messy discussion that we had there. It's really not worth <laughs> retelling exactly what happened there. But uh, he came back to say, I know it's really not your fault and the player base has declined, but removing Solo Bloodhound Mord for four days is not going to hurt anything and will only make the PS5 community extremely happy. And we can actually play ranked. Anyways, take care, David. David replies, it will hurt the players uh, playing it not wanting to play ranked. Trust me, there's more of them than players wanting to play ranked. Reiterating what we just said, there's more players. There's more players that want solo blood hunt than people that want to play solo ranked. Confirmed by David right there. Numbers issue. There we go. Okay. Moving on. We're moving quickly through things now. Um, yes. I'm just going to post both of those things here. There we go. It's in a conversation with Andy Slaps. Andy Slaps says, The devs of Bloodhood are extremely talented and overqualified. Someone this week accused me of, of, um, uh, brown nosing the devs, which I refuted. I'm not trying to. This sentence, though, like, come on, Andy. Extremely talented. Okay, yeah. I mean, they probably are, but I mean, like, starting something to ask a question, like, sus. It's, wait, hold on. Hold on. Anyways, okay. Uh... <laughs> So, my question is, if the reload bug was solved and fixed more than a week ago, and why uh, why was the mini patch not introduced yet? Feels bad to have this happen during the EGL tournament today, so probably he had reload bug that caused him issues. Um, I'm just wondering if there's a legitimate reason for not doing a small patch to fix the reload bug before the bigger patch in July. Just asking for clarity if there is any, because I'm not the only one, only player frustrated. We've talked about this last week, but here's David going to reiterate it again. I feel you. The reason it's not released separately is that the time it takes from verified, uh, verified fix to actual release build, which also needs verification. We don't want hit reg again on its own is longer than the slated release, the next patch, under current process. Essentially, the bug fix, uh, bug fix being verified is just the first step in getting something to release. The release itself takes a bunch of time too, and unique builds. But this time is also something we are going to address through our new process to separate things better to get faster. So we're talking about two things here. First, the uh, hit reg, the, the reload bug, the gas bug. And I, I suppose, like, I, I think that uh, some other issues are all related to the same Hydra bug, the Hydra bug that they've been, re like, referring to, um, which is, you know, synchronization of state between 
uh, game on the server and game on your PC, any device that you're playing the game. Um, so this is all tied together. So it's not only a change to fix this, it's a change to fix other uh, other components of the game. And there are, since they're different components, they have to be tested probably, I would suppose, individually. But they all, all the changes have to be done to many things. So all the many things have to be shipped together into one patch. And getting all of those approved is taking a lot of time uh also like continuing on the idea that we saw last week about them uh trying to reorganize internally uh in order to make the patching and the testing and the qa process much more faster and easier they've been he's confirming that they've been reorganizing internally in order to get patches out quicker um the other thing that was mentioned is um, the patch in July will be super, super important, but you will need some uh, big marketing events or plays as well to let uh, people know what is going on. I still want to interview about the patch and more when we can do one. Uh, David replies, as do I. Important patch indeed. I've seen some cool trailers and stuff, so we should be pretty good. Here's hoping we can get a, a more smooth experience across the board, too. Cool trailers, you say? Trailers? We're getting, tra we're getting trailers soon? Can, can I see them? Can we, can we see the trailers? I want, I want to see trailers. I'm getting excited. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Next up. <laughs> uh, next up, next up. Yes, this is good. We're talking about things incoming. Well, let's talk about details of of um, season two. Yes, Cthulhu, reminding people that it's a free game doesn't hurt either. Whenever I go into other um, Blood Hunt streamers uh, uh, streams, uh, there's always there's always someone to add that's asking like, so what's this game? And they say like it's Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt. I always sh chime in to go like, hi, by the way, this game is free. Download it. Uh, it's free to play. It is free to play. So, you know, people don't like spending money. <laughs> so, uh, we got a season two leak. In quotation marks. Leak. Jakey posted, like, hopefully season two is a banger. And then post a screenshot from Discord. Now, <laughs> uh... It's David. It's not a leak. It's David, but it's David leaking his own material. So wait, that could be. That's not a good phrasing. I can get it. Too late. It's out there. It's out there. I can't do it. Like I don't know how to edit videos. Um, yeah, we got some nice uh, additional tools with the update uh, that I hope uh, means I can populate uh, Australia with South America again too. We finally got control cues per region. And all the matchmaker settings uniquely, including crossplay, per queue overrides, etc. That will help, well, that and the banger parts of the update, plus reload uh, red gas fixes, obviously, and about 1,000 total other improvements. I know there's another article coming this week, and then next week too, and then patch notes in detail, trailer, etc. So it should be good. Remember what I was saying that they were doing a lot of band-aid fixes to the game that they like a lot of the stuff that's been happening over the last i'd say like month where they've been like testing out things they've been testing out things with tools that are available right now in the game such as the adding of the hair color and the hair uh the hairstyles and all of this um you know being able to change within the framework of what's already in the game that doesn't require a patch They've been doing this. This is telling you, we've got control cues per region. We got some additional tools with the update. So they'll be able to manipulate. They put, they're put. they gonna be putting tools for them to be able to manipulate 
sorry, manipulate different things about the game in real time, which is stuff that, you know, they've been telling us like, uh, unfortunately, we can't do this, we can't do that, you're gonna have to deal with what we can give you, blah, blah, blah. Now they're adding in tools, so more versatility, more, more versatility to do things in a more live capacity that won't require patches and they'll be able to tweak things. That's good. Also, calling it a leak, it's actually a leak because uh, Motion Gaming here on the side says like, ooh, more details leak and, <laughs> and tags David and David says, shh, Jacob would hunt me down. Jacob is the one that is, um, I believe, responsible for um, community social posts. So whatever you see, like in terms of blogs or in terms of um, tw official Twitter posts from uh, the Bloodhound Twitter, that is Jacob at, uh, at SharkBub that takes care of this. So he's been leaking some stuff. Jacob will hunt him down. We know that David is still alive, thankfully. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so this is the, like, in terms of like, this, this, this is exciting. They'll have more tools. Um, that's not the extent probably of all the tools that they have, but we're going to go with this. Uh, also more season two stuff. There we go. Pat posting. Um, we're talking about the state of cues when the patch is going to happen. Uh, crossplay off, um, crossplay off only works on ranked, or we'd have done that and other things already. So someone's asking, wait, hold on, I might as well just start from already. David, I think this patch is, date is too far away, it's not difficult to implement. Why not just test a few days with crossplay off, <laughs> uh, just solos and see the reaction or leave a ranked solo in permanently until the update lets a PlayStation players getting angry. David says, crossplay off only works on ranked. Or we'd have done that and other things already. Post patch solos and ranked will be crossplay off to begin with, keeping group modes crossplay essentially. That's interesting. And also, I think that that means that they are committed or they're committing to have ranked season two begin at the beginning of season two, which is like, you, you'd think like this is normal. This is expected. There's season two. Well, of course, season two means there's going to be like ranked season two, of course. But um, given the current states of, of queues and matchmaking, that could have actually been a concern to go like, OK, so we're going to start season two. We're just going to funnel. We're going to keep continuing to have the uh, the funneling of the queues. We're not going to have all the queues up at all times. You know, they could have said that. But no, they're going to go. They're going like, yeah, we're, go we're going with all queues. We're going with all queues uh, and ranked will be there. We're going to see if maybe the patch and the news of the patch and getting the buzzword out, maybe it'll get more people back in because a lot of people quit the game because of all the bugs and we're waiting for the patch to fix all the major issues. So if people hear this is the patch to fix all the major issues, maybe it's going to come back. Maybe the competitive players who have nothing, like are not interested, as stated previously, not interested in any other thing than ranked mode. They're going to have their ranked mode available for them already, like at the start of the season. That is good. That is good to hear. Um, but one thing that I've been wondering, and I'm glad that it's being addressed here by David, um, we're doing changes, of course, to uh, for coming ranked setups. Cur it's currently, it's clearly not the mode that players want. But the rewards and playing to get better is, of course, not something we'll give up on. That's a pretty central thing. We just need to find the right format and tempo, etc. So there is indeed changes coming to ranked mode. Um, I know that the focus right now of the community is just like get the patch out to fix the major bugs. 
that's what the community wants just fix the major bugs so then people can be like okay i can start enjoying this game because what was breaking the game was increasing my not enjoyment of the game now that that's fixed maybe i can be angry about something else in the game because <laughs> it's always this it's always the it's the constant feedback loop from gamers um but no like the, the, remember that originally people started playing ranked uh a lot of people tried a few games and then a lot of people like disappeared from ranked because they're just, everyone agreed that this wasn't the the mode that they wanted rank this ranked mode wasn't fun uh it was very grindy it, although we have to admit that ranked will always have an, an element of grinding involved in this especially if you're trying to climb up there's always going to be a grind so just like expect grind grinding to do just you know it's the level of grindiness that is usually the thing that maybe they can iterate on, maybe they can change. So they're doing some changes. I'm glad that someone's addressing that changes to ranked are going to be happening. I'm curious to see what exactly and how that's going to play out, but I'm glad to see that the subject, the topic has not been forgotten. And not just that, they're going to iterate on this. So hopeful about this. Um, yeah, another big topic of, of conversation that a lot of people have been complaining about, but we haven't had, like, any significant kind of, like, info about it. Ex-Deadly Company here says, What is being done about the increase of cheaters slash hackers? I love the game, but it's starting to feel like the player count is more important. Uh, that we're allowing, we're allowing the game to be the platform where cheaters can test their cheats without any consequences. David replies, uh, the increase is sadly a result of smaller population too, but outside of that, we are in investing into more automatic actions to the human uh, current ones and the um, easy anti-cheat baseline. That and other means to make repeat cheating harder. Uh, Andy Slaps add, uh, one thing that would be great to implement is flagging accounts that have specific stats. 99 of people that are, uh, that are level 20 and, uh, below that have over 45% accuracy are cheating. Isn't perfect, but stats should be flagged, higher kills, damage, accuracy, etc. to pick up on cheating earlier. And David says, yep, that's in the work, both from a reporting point of view and an automation one. That was something, that was like the topic of discussion that was mentioned a while ago, like a long, long while ago, uh, because there's a bunch of people that are saying like, oh, easy anti-cheat and they're in, you're still, they're still cheaters in the game. Easy anti-cheat is bad. And there's, there's many, there's many fact, there's many things that you have to factor in, in terms of like how cheaters are not being are not being caught and like we talked about last week it's still a very much a learning process and they've they've said like a while ago that looking at player stats and maybe flagging some accounts for further inspection and some of them like at th to a certain threshold where the accuracy is too good you don't necessarily need to flag them for to have a human go study the account and see if they're cheating there's a certain there's a certain threshold where above that level of accuracy or kills or whatever that you know they're going to be automatically flagged to be cheaters but it it required much more uh tooling fine tuning in in the terms of like what shark mob is telling their specific like easy anti-cheat i guess module um you know they, they they have the they have the the software they have the program the program works in a certain way they still have to just like make the inputs twist the dials to say like you know these are the cheater behaviors they need to improve on this and this is what exactly david is confirming there so that's good to hear, again, that that's going to happen. But yeah, again, as a reminder, 
cheating is an on, is an is a ongoing battle that's going to happen all the time um the question is always how responsive can the developers be to like where where uh, when you become at the point where cheaters are extremely prevalent and they're breaking the game um uh, yeah so uh another thing about oh yeah this is this is interesting this is interesting mm -hmm. little 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 tidbit hold on hold on hold on little juicy tidbit about season two just need to edit it just a little bit to post it here Meriden, Meriden Unknown, uh, which if you don't know, he's the official slash unofficial um, Blood Hunt lore video guy, as he says he calls himself. Uh, he's been extremely, um, uh, he's been like the one person that's been standing out from the community as uh, paying attention to the lore, making lore videos on his YouTube channel. If ever you want to know exactly like more of what's happening, what are the stories, uh, he's been the one that's been going through like the journals of your character, going through the lore, um, going through everything, and he's the lore guy. Also, if you have any issues with the quests in game that you have to accomplish in Steam, uh, in the Steam community for Blood Hunt. You can look for his guides under Meriden Unknown. Uh, he's got some very detailed guides on where you have to go to complete quest lines. So he's a good person to follow. So he's chimed up this week saying, for those that haven't seen it yet, there's a new quest available today in Blood Hunt called Inside Job. It starts with Kirill and is only one step. Talk to the doorman. The trick is you must speak to him as a Ventru, and you receive the banner, Cunning, Cunning Tactics. The interesting part, though, is what he says to you. Fellow Ventru, things are about to get interesting. When the boss is, uh... What? That's not... A lot, of a lot more of us will arrive should, should be any, any minute now. Let's, let's look, hold on. I've got a picture here. There we go. Doorkeeper. Phil Ventru, things are about to get interesting. When the boss is set up, a lot more of us will arrive. Should be any minute now. The boss. Uh, that's the impression I'm getting at last. We should get some info about uh, what comes next from the dev soon. I, for one, am looking forward to hearing all about what comes next, as well as what will be fixed in the next patch. Uh, so what he was saying is that, are we going to see a second Ventru archetype, as well as the arrival of M in Season 2? So let's look at this. Let's, uh, first of all, first of all, let's look at the banner you're getting from completing this quest. Nice, there's blood on the dance floor. Um, a quick note to everyone. Uh, it seems that uh, this quest is not necessarily available to everyone. If you still have other quest lines in your quest log, uh, you have to complete them before this one is available. So go ahead, go forth and go questing. Like I said, Steam Community for Blood Hunt, Meriden, uh, Meriden Unknown uh, guides to help you complete quests. They're all there. Uh, but yeah. When the boss is set up, a lot of us, a, a lot more of us will arrive. We've pondered over the fact that the other NPCs, uh, apart from Kustos, Kustos is the keeper of the Elysium, we've got Maya, Kirill, and Omnis, which are all three, all three are Primogen. They're in Primogen position in the Elysium. We always found it interesting that this Ventru showed up, and he was just a doorkeeper, or as I call him, Hodor. Um, and he is not a primogen, so we were wondering, first of all, why are you keeping the door locked? Why are you keeping us from going through this door? And second, where's the Ventru primogen? So now, 
the boss is set up, will we see the boss? Will we see the Ventru Primogen? Uh, I believe the name is M. Will we see them in Season 2? A lot more of us will arrive. A lot more of us. Are we going to see a squadron of Ventru? Is this signaling that we're going to get the second Ventru archetype, as a lot of people have speculated that we're going to get? Because right now, with the way that the game is, is made, we've got two archetypes per clan. It would stand to reason that we'd get a second archetype for Ventru. Maybe this is the sign of it. Maybe this isn't it at all, and maybe this is just a red herring. Uh, maybe the boss is going to be there, we're not going to see them, maybe this, this doesn't mean anything. I don't know, but in terms of lore and stuff like this, the Ventru are usually the bosses. Uh, they are the ones, they are the leading kindred, they're the ones who take charge of things, of business, of relations, stuff like that. Maybe the arrival of the boss of the Ventru is actually going to be the stuff is going to be the reason or the the catalyst that will stop Kirill in his mad dash at trying to basically kill everyone that's in Prague that is not part of the Camarilla. Anyways, so that's that's related to lore. It's okay if you don't care about lore. We're just going to continue. Okay, I, I found some more information about more stuff. Uh, stuff that isn't necessarily confirmed to be coming in season two. It's we're gonna we're in a section of things of maybe in the future, things that we'll see. So another tweet from David. Um, someone uh, someone asks when we when we will get uh, when will we get full crossplay so PS5 and PC players can play duos and trios together which has been a big ask from the community. Some people accusing Blood Hunt of saying, you said crossplay. This is not what we're getting. This is not true crossplay. And they're angry about this. It's like, you lied. David answers, that requires some specific stuff implemented to be following the requirements, which we are investigating what the fastest way there would look like. We would uh, we obviously pri uh, prioritize making a playing console a good experience so first, but this is very much on the short list following. This sentence reads as: We're improving. We're improving. Uh, we're improving gameplay right now. This is our focus. Getting full crossplay happening is not too far behind in terms of development. So people that have been waiting for crossplay, this is your shining beacon of maybe. Maybe it's going to happen. Uh, well, actually, not maybe. It's like we're looking into it. Not confirming anything, but we're looking into it. This is what we're getting. Uh, other stuff. Again, another reminder that just enable trios ranked is not a thing. Uh, I hope you guys know that if you just enable trios ranked, your player base will grow uh, immensely overnight, right? This is a trios based game. A trios based game. Not sure you guys can't see that. Hold on a second. Where's my thing? Where's my thing? Uh, 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 where's my thing? Nope. Don't know if you can hear that. That was a big nope. Trios based game? Absolutely not. This is absolutely not. That is a common misconception, as far as I know. It was always developed and always put out first and foremost as a solo based game. Trios and duos is something that came out as a demand from the community. Yeah, the nope is not loud because it's browser based. So there, it's like it's mixed with the chill hop right now. So sorry, you're not going to hear it. So that's sad. Um, but yeah, that's that's that is a false assumption as far as I know. Maybe they had plans to do it. 
maybe they had plans to do trios all along and it's not something that they shared but first and foremost when the game came out it was a solo based game uh so talking about enabling trios ranked david replies just to make it clear there is no just enable trios ranked it needs development to function Things expected for groups uh, ranked needed handling, how to reward RP, how to um, deduct, I, I think he means deduct cost of RP, how to handle disconnects, how to handle levers, loss forgiveness, etc, etc. Group ranked is the goal, but we need solving these things and possibly more first and the priority now is general quality across the board. Meaning... It's in the list of improvements. It's a big ask from the community that uh, ranked trios and ranked duos are put in the game. So, of course, they're going to work on it. Like, that's pretty much guaranteed, and this pose pretty much guarantees it. Um, but right now, that's not the focus, so they have to... What David is saying is there's many problems that will need solving before it gets... Uh, uh, before it gets implemented. They need to find solutions that are good with everyone. And I guess they also need to consider uh, the changes to ranked that are going to happen. What's going to happen with this? Uh, other stuff. And that's going to make a lot of people happy. I think. Can I at least know if sooner or later there will be integration for mouse and keyboard or, or mouse and keyboard on the console? Just to remove this doubt, David replies, if we see healthy growth on all platforms, stuff like this is on the table for sure. It needs specific solutions to matchmaking pools, etc. before being feasible too, of course. So mouse and keyboard for console may be going to develop, but only if... People come back to the game, basically, is what David is saying. Um, so, yeah, it's not going to be worth developing if the player base isn't there. That's pretty simple, cut and dried. There we go. Moving on to the next topic. Uh, one thing that I'm personally going to be very happy about. Um, there is something that uh, there was a discussion, and Twisted Mind here said there's something that trigger that Tigger knows. I bet, but if the information has slipped in the cracks, we would love solid going open communication. Doctor Nocturne as says, David actually leaks quite a lot, but it must be official channels, not personal accounts, dev streams, etc. David says it is coming. It takes time to rejig, but once momentum is gained, this is the new norm. Expect next week to start with comms work and continue from there. Basically, Calior doesn't have to go through uh, to uh, to David's Twitter every single day to pick up like most of those news. Hopefully, this will go through the main Bloodhound Twitter channel, and yeah, there needs to be uh, that. Like, mm, I think we all agree that. Communication has been like what in, in on, on the one hand, it's been very open, it's been very transparent. On the other hand, there are holes in uh, there are holes or just like um, missed opportunities in terms of communication, and these need to be plugged up. There needs to be a whole communication strategy being. Uh, like reworked and redone so exactly this is what david is also saying here that's a part of the i assume all the internal changes that they've been doing inside the teams on how they work together um yeah <laughs> only for leaks where that will be in place yeah so i'll still i'll still look at david's twitter i'll still look at combat's glutes twitter of course because they're the most the people that have been giving a lot of info. Uh, Jacob's Twitter. I'll still continue doing this and reporting it to you over here. If there's a need to. Because the thing is, if the communication, communication reorganizing is actually successful, 
the hope is that there won't be any need for me to do this kind of thing every weekend. <laughs> so all the information is going to be there. There's not going to be any discussion. There's not going to be need for any interpretation, reinterpretation or recontextualizing from someone. And hopefully we'll just all follow the Blood Hunt Twitter. Everyone will be happy. Everyone will be okay. Personally, I, I, I can't follow Discord. I know that there's some info that goes on Discord. I just can't follow it because it's like an ongoing chat room that goes on 24-7. And I have a full... <laughs> I have a day job. I have a full-time day job. I don't have enough hours in the day to be able to... Uh, uh, to be able to parse through this and get all the info. I'm sorry, I'm sure there's some interesting info that I would also like, like to be able to see, but it slipped through the cracks because I'm choosing Twitter as a method of communication and gathering information over Discord, even though there's been information on Discord apparently. But, you know, I'm counting on other people to go on, to go on Discord, find a relevant information, then tweet about it. Uh, some people know about this. Um, yeah, hold on. Cheers. Mm. Yeah, hopefully there'll still be things to talk about. Like, I don't want to, I want to still continue doing this. This is, this is a fun activity for me. I'm not being paid for this, you know. Um, another thing that I want to advertise is that if you're interested in the lore, a vampire to masquerade or the universe or what's going on or knowing a little bit more about the tabletop rpg vampire to masquerade that um that this is all you know drawing from as inspiration uh also in terms of like we've been saying this is based off of v5 version 5 of vampire to masquerade it's a rule book Kind of like the same way that Dungeons and Dragons is currently on their V5 as well. Um, there is, if you, if there's people out there that know about Critical Role, which is very the the ultra popular D and D live show. Um, there is also uh, there's also Vampire the Masquerade live show. There was one that was very popular a few a few years ago called LA by Night. Uh, still available to watch. There's five seasons total. Uh, season one, two, and three can be found on the Geek and Sundry channel on YouTube. Seasons four and five can be found on the World of Darkness YouTube channel. It was fantastic. It is a very different vibe from Critical Role. As in, yes, they're playing with dice. Yes, they're, they're still telling a story, but everyone there is in character. And you have the wonderful storyteller that is Jason Carl. That does a fantastic work in setting a story, telling a story, and controlling what is happening. You get nothing but gameplay all this time. Uh, I would say contrarily to D&D, games where people just like mess around and joke around and you know blah 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 there's still a bit of that but it's very very sparse and limited where you're breaking the fourth wall and everything everyone's in character and now there is a new series again with the same storyteller jason carl and returning um in the middle here is the fantastic alex ward uh, that was in L.A. by night. Um, we now have a new story that's happening in New York. And uh, it just started last night. Um, it is, yeah, like it says, uh, Friday 7 p.m. Pacific on the World of, Darkness, World of Darkness Twitch channel. The VOD is available for subscribers, I believe. And then the following week after it was live streamed. It's all pre-recorded anyways. But uh, the following week, it is posted on YouTube, usually. So if ever you want, like, if you're looking for a show that has to do with vampires, there's one that is developing right now 
Uh, watched it last night. It was fantastic. Things went absolutely smoothly. This is smoothie smoothly things went very smoothly there was no problem there was no conflict everyone had perfect dice rolls um they were just being vampy vampy vampires and nothing happened at all no one had a bestial fav uh, bestial fav failure and lost control of their beast uh no blood was spilled everything went fine it's, this is going to be a good show. This is going to be a really good show. <laughs> Anyways, so that's all for the news. I wanted to share this because it was fantastic. Uh, LA by Night was fantastic. And by the looks of the last night's show, like episode one of season one, this 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 is going to be good. This is going to be for good, folks. So <clears throat> that's it for the news. I just want to take... Like, I know that it's been, yes, it's been an hour. I just want to take a moment to address, with all these news, what's happening now. Um, hold on, I'm just gonna do this. Yeah, let's go, let's go full screen here. Yeah, 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 can, does this work? Yeah, this works, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna play this, just gonna, just gonna play all of this in the background. Yeah, this is this is interesting. I just want a little background here. So, so yeah, what happens now, and what can we expect in terms of in terms of the patch, in terms of what's going to happen? Right now, like we said, eleven days, sixteen hours until the end of season one. So that's like a. a not even a week and a half. Uh, like, make no mistake, this week and a half is probably going to be the lowest numbers that the game will ever see. Uh, in a way, it's expected. Like, in a way, because of the, the state that the game is currently in, we're all waiting for fixes. Uh, and also, it's expected in the terms of that's how it would be for any game that has seasonal content. Basically, if you have a season, people complete their, their, their game pass, their battle pass or whatever, they get their objectives completed, they get their, object, their uh, achievements done, and then once they're done with doing all of this, day in and day out, they move on until the next patch arrives. Uh, and the new battle pass arrives, and then you continue. You know, the whole cycle starts again. Everyone's been a part of games that have seasonal passes. Everyone knows the situation. Uh, and, you know, any kind of game that functions with, with uh, content patches, this is normal. This is expected. Low numbers are going to happen. And this week, like... And those next 11 days are probably going to be the lowest that the game has ever seen. There's going to be a bunch of people that may be hurrying to get their battle pass completed because they just remembered, hey, this is about to end. I've paid for this. You know, might as well go for the, all the cosmetics that I that have been, you know, going for. Um, and then we're going to have the patch. So if we're talking about expectations for the patch. We know that the devs, uh, the dev team has been communicating that they've been hearing us loud and clear, okay? Like, people have been praising the open, the openness, transparency of the communication. But, as some others would say, these are just words. And for some people, uh, words aren't good enough. After all, because we're here to play a game, right? So, the collective worry of the community is we hope that the devs aren't going to fail on the execution. So, while this isn't a patch that will fix the entire game, in my opinion, uh, it's undeniable that there's a lot riding on it in terms of goodwill with 
uh, population of gamers that are still hopeful about the game, whether they talk about it in a positive way or a negative way, we're all hoping for this game to actually be good, be better, like outdo itself. We're all hoping for this. It's like it's it is in literally it's in everyone's best interest that this patch is successful. Uh, and I hope we're clear on that point because uh, if people if if after the patch people say that the devs didn't care, like that's not it. The devs care, okay? The devs actually care because it's the survival of their game. So they're gonna do everything to make it successful. So all that stuff about like people say that like devs didn't care, absolutely not it. That is not the point. The point is. Did the result of the patch match the plan of what they told us and the expectations that they put forward? That is going to be the thing. So, because sometimes, honestly, in everyday stuff, like you make a plan, you try to follow through with the plan. And in a lot of cases, sometimes the plan doesn't go through or doesn't go exactly the way that you planned it. So there's always a period of readjusting, such as when they did launch, they did that. When they did the patch to try to fix the reload bug, well, to, f to fix the AK bug that created the reload bug and all of this. Um, you know, it's iteration that you have to do. But, uh, but yeah, I hope, that, I hope that we're clear is just that their plan of trying to fix the game, fix the community, fix the everything about this game. Like, did it actually match what they thought that they were doing and what they, what we told them that we wanted to see inside the game. So the things that we know that are in the patch so far, uh, we know that there's, uh, they're gonna fix the most annoying and prevalent bugs that are in the game. We know that controllers are going to receive a significant upgrade. We know that the store is going to receive a significant upgrade. And of course, we can assume that there's going to be a season two battle pass with a lot of, with the usual nicks and knacks that come along with it. It is very appropriate that right now, I should point this way, <laughs> that right now the battle pass for season one video is currently playing. It is not planned, but that's good. <laughs> but that's what we know is in the patch. Um, uh, another another important part to another another point that is important to make in terms of the impact of the patch, like whether it's a success or a failure, because it can be either. Oh, sorry, it can be either or, right? Um, even if the patch and season announcements manage to get to start, not to get people back in, but to start getting people back in the game, it's going to be a process. If people don't show up to play the game, the matchmaking and queue time issues are going to remain. So, really, I mean, personally, me, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to play Blood Hunt almost exclusively, at least for the first week of the patch, when it's all going to be happening. Besides, I'm probably going to buy my battle pass and I'm going to be grinding it anyways. Like, that's that's for sure for me. You know, that's going to be a thing. Uh, so, yeah, like, that's an, that's a thing that maybe, like, I don't know if it's, a, if it's a thing that should be said, but at the same time, if no one says it, like, you got to say it, like, okay, you've, community, Blood Hunt community, you've been wanting all these changes, you've been wanting all these fixes for the game, when the patch is there, show up. Show up and give feedback, you know? And try to give good feedback. Don't say, like, you know, a lot of, like, quantitative stuff, qualitative stuff about, you know, good devs, bad devs, or whatever. Like, there's other ways to formulate clearly exactly, like, the feedback that you want to give them in order to fix things. If the feedback on the things to fix is clear, they're going to be... Uh, they're going to be more sure about the things to fix. Um, uh, the other thing is, of course, like, 
also another thing I shouldn't be saying, but I have to say at some point, it's just internally at Shark Mob, if um, if players don't show up after the devs put so much time and effort inside this patch, like this is all associated internally to a cost. Okay, it's it's really an investment that they're doing inside their game to get a return on investment. If there's no return, if players don't show up, if there's no like, you know, more interest inside this game, then I'm afraid that we're going to see like for real this time. That's probably going to signal the actual real death of the game that so many people online have been predicting for months and months i mean not months and months but at least like for weeks uh modern day nostradamuses um and i want to add like there's still some missing information that i think that we would like to hear about such as the improvements to ranked mode like it's good to acknowledge that there's going to be improvements but we need like i think i i think and i would have expected them to put out information just to get some feelers out to the community going like okay this is the approach that we're thinking about and then seeing like gauging the community response um but that's just me that's a strategy that's an internal strategy like maybe that's the way that they want to do it that's fine uh we're missing information of will they fix the freaking red dots in the menu that never go away even if you click everything and you highlight everything it's it's just something that annoys me and i feel very passionate about because i have a little bit of adhd in me uh and another thing that we're missing is still how will the season transition work uh like i already said like is it Season 1 expires the last second ticks off. Season 2 is immediately available. Will there be server maintenance? Uh, will we have, like, in-game server messages to let us know that, you know, server is about to go down, server is about to shut down for maintenance or for patching or whatever. Uh, and technically, like, they, they don't need to give us that information. There's plenty of other game studios that have just been, like, you know servers are going down and then you know as it's happening they're telling us like okay uh you can't log in the game right now you need to patch it and then uh and then in an hour get back in the game everything like new content should be there for you like i don't know me i like those kinds of heads up you know well we had that info is that going to be a part of the community, the many communications that we're supposed to have next week? We'll see. Um, I'm expecting personally to have one of the, these communications to be about what's in the patch, what's not in the patch. And if it's not in that patch, when are we going to see those changes to be applied to the game? Like in terms of timeline, in terms of having a... Uh, how do you call this? A timeline of events, a battle plan of what's going to happen. That is what I think myself and many other players in the community, we want to know that, like, we want to know that there's a plan. You know, we want to play this game. We want this game to be better, but at least, you know, give us a plan. Uh, so far, we the only thing that we know is that, you know, mid-July... The plan is to patch the game and see what happens. Uh, yeah. So that's going to be the news for this week for Blood Hunt. Uh, sorry about that little editorial here, but it's, you know, gauging expectations from everyone for everyone about what's going to happen. Uh, what I think is, you know, at least reasonable to expect. Uh, so thank you for thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, coming live. And chatting um, I'm still gonna be there though after the recording uh, thank you for uh, thank you for following the th thank you for following my twitch channel thank you for following even my YouTube channel if you even I have it thank you for following my Twitter uh, and yeah I'll see you next week and remember to stay healthy and keep on sucking 
blood, blood. I bet, I bet. Some